top. This would be great. <sighs> hey internet, it's Megan and today I am doing my January wrap up video. The books that I read in January bring my total for Project 52 to 5 and I will continue to give you guys updates as I go throughout the year. Now, if you like what you're seeing on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that way you get notified anytime I post a new video. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in and get started. We're going to go ahead and get started with the first book that I read this month, and that was A Thousand Nights by E.K. Johnston, and I gave this book four out of five stars. I will link the video that I did of this review down below. It is a spoiler-free review, so feel free to check that out. Um, but the book itself was really good. I'm really glad I started out with this one this month because it had wonderful storytelling. It was very well built and put together. The most interesting thing about the novel itself, besides the fact that it's a reimagining of Thousand and One Nights, is the fact that none of the characters are named with the exception of the king. So it was really good and I recommend it. The second book that I read this month was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And this book was amazing. I gave it five out of five stars. And I used this as my focus for the January page to screen video, which I will link down below. Now, the story is about a young boy named Connor who is trying to come to terms with his mother's illness. And he is visited by a monster who starts to tell him stories. And it's just a wonderful visual experience as well as a mental one. I mean, the artwork in this book is like amazing. Let's see. Just some of the things that you see as you're flipping through it. Just little things throughout the book that just make the novel such an experience. It's a great commentary on grief and how people deal with it. And just, I definitely recommend this book. The third book that I read this month was Macbeth by Shakespeare. Now this was part of my book club for the people that I work with. We all have our own little book club there. This was the first book that we've done in that club and I love Macbeth. So I really wanted to dive more into how it is written and I got the No Fear Shakespeare version because it has the actual text and then the modern translation. So it's very interesting to read. I definitely interpreted a couple of things differently than they do in this book, but it really enhances it to read through both versions. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the story of Macbeth, I definitely recommend picking it up. The baseline story here is witches come up into the scene and they mess stuff up. Now, of course, the witches only make a, a very brief appearance in the novel, but they set in motion just this horrible tragedy of murder and rage and secrets and it's just it's a classic that I feel must be read by anybody who likes to read it's one of the tragedies so of course you know that it's not going to end well <laughs> but I recommend it because Shakespeare is just it's Shakespeare so yeah and I gave this five out of five stars by the way the fourth book that I read this month was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. And I gave this one five out of five stars as well. And I am going to be posting a spoiler-free review on Friday, so feel free to check out that video when it comes up. But the story itself is a reimagining of Beauty and the Beast. It's very well done. It's very character-based rather than plot-based or action-based. It's very different from the Throat of Glass series, which Sarah J. Moss um, wrote. This is her trilogy. The first two books are out. The third one's coming out this year. I loved it, but then again, I do love fairy tales. I recommend this for anybody who does have an, a love of fairy tales. Just don't expect the story that you know, because of course Sarah J. Moss did turn it on its head. It's really good, so I do recommend it. The fifth and final book that I got through this month was Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion, and I gave this one four out of five stars. I read a lot of reimaginings this month. This one is no different. It is a reimagining of Romeo and Juliet, but of course, true to reimaginings, something's got to be different. Instead of the Capulets and Montagues, it's a love story between R, a zombie, and Julie, a human. This book was campy, fun, and just so well done. R 
is tired of being a zombie with nothing to do but eat and ramble around the airport that he lives in. Now, Julie is tired of being the princess in the ivory tower, leaves the human enclave to go get supplies, and runs into R. And it just sparks this whole amazing love story that I think was so well done, very campy, very fun, and I recommend it to anybody who likes zombies just because it's not your typical zombie movie or zombie book. Now, I will be focusing on this one for February for my page to screen book, so look forward to that in the coming week, and uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Those are the five books that I read in the month of January, and I absolutely loved them. That brings my total for Project 52 up to five books. I will continue to give you guys updates as I go. You can follow my progress on my Goodreads account down below. Um, I will link that. And yeah, that completes this video for today. If you have any questions, just comment down below and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you guys thought. So thanks for watching and have a great day.